Hello, my name is Aaron with iBorderPair and iPhone Data Recovery, and today I'm going to be working on another data recovery case. Um, this one will be an iPhone 7. Uh, this one has unremarkable appearances. It's not water damaged, it's not bent, it's not smashed. Um, so when I'm working with case, uh, cases like this, you definitely have to have a plan and you definitely have to have the right tools, otherwise you're just going to be flying blind. Um, so in, in, in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing how I deal with uh, no power cases like this that, are, uh, that aren't giving any hints as to what the problem is. Um, so the very first thing I like to do is to see what my DC power supply does when I connect the probes to the battery connector. That tends to be my first step for every no power case that I work with. Um, it always gives a useful bit of information. So I will go ahead and do that now. Connect my probes to the battery connector and I observe this number here to see um, if I'm getting an abnormal current draw, um, which in this case I am not. If I had, uh, for example, a mainline short, I would see an immediate amp draw and this number spike up as soon as I touch these connectors. I'm not seeing that, so this is not a PCC main or mainline type short of a problem. Um, so after this, you just prompt the phone to boot and see if the startup sequence looks normal or uh, abnormal. So I'll press the power button here and it looks like I'm getting a 40 milliamp amp draw here. And uh, this is a, a category of problems that I deal with pretty frequently. Um, it's, it's a low power mode. I, I don't really know what to call this mode. I just call it a low power mode, but it probably should have some sort of name. Anything from like 20 milliamps to 120 milliamps when it just sits there, it's a, it's a, it's a common mode that the phone will go into um, when something is wrong. Um, this mode will, in most cases, uh, the power rails will be turning on when I see this type of amp draw. Um, the I2C lines will be turning on and I can use that information to determine um, what's missing. So basically a lot of the times when I see this mode, I have a missing power rail or a missing I2C line or a missing NAND line um, or something like that. Um, not necessarily a shorted line. A shorted line would give me a different type of amp draw, but a missing line. So possibly a missing coil, a missing resistor, um, something along those lines. Um, so I will be showing in this video my approach to dealing with that. And um, we can get started with it right away. So give me one moment while I pull this board out and we'll jump right into it. Okay, I have the motherboard out of the housing and uh, we can start looking at it. So, this one, I have to go off the idea that I have something missing and I have to def figure out what is missing. So, there are a few things I know about the iPhone 8. I know the iPhone 8 has some... Um, some pressure points in specific locations. So every iPhone, well, most iPhones have faults that occur at some pressure point on the phone. Uh, for example, the iPhone 6 Plus used to famously give uh, touch disease, which was really just flexion of the motherboard causing disconnects of certain lines. And that was because of where that chip was located on that motherboard. It was prone to um, prone to damage from very small flexions. Um, I, there's something similar to that on the, on the iPhone 8. And that would be um, the coils underneath the CPU shield. Especially the ones in this area here. There's a few that, that tend to go bad and there's a few over here that tend to come loose and down over here as well. Um, so that's kind of my first initial idea of, of what I think may be wrong with this phone is um, is loose coils in that in that spot so that's probably going to be one of the very first things i check and in fact i, th I think i'm just going to go ahead and check that now i guess i'll just pull this up first this side um, i could probably check to see if this is pulling anything through the charge port um, to see if i have some sort of like hydra or tigris problem which is my charging ic's um, and I guess I'll do that. 
but I, I don't expect I'll have a Hydra or um, Tigris problem in this case. I'm sorry, I should say TriStar. This is the iPhone 7, which still uses the TriStar charging IC, not Hydra. So let's just see if I uh, if I get anything on my AM AM meter here when I uh, when I connect this phone through the charge port. I suspect I will get something. If I get nothing, then I would more suspect that uh, the charging ICs might be a problem. And I'm getting something. At first it went to just 50 milliamps and then zero. And now it's sitting at a steady 0.26. And it's moving just a little bit. But I'm getting something, so I, I don't necessarily think that... Um, that the charging ICs are going to be a problem. One other thing I should probably check is that uh, when the phones are in these in these low power modes, I almost always will be able to connect to the PC in DFU mode. Um, that's another diagnosis step I take towards uh, determining whether or not it's a charging circuit problem. Um, but in this case, my computer's taken by another iPhone right now and uh, I already don't think it's going to be a charging IC problem. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull the shield off the front. Oh, I'm sorry, I was mistaken. This is not even an iPhone 8 and I was talking about iPhone 8 signature problems. This is an iPhone 7 which I already already mentioned. Um, but the general idea still remains the same, that I can still have uh, loose coils or bad I2C lines or bad uh, resistors or something like that. So still I'm going to take off this, sh this shield because um, it's definitely going to be worth it to check those coils that are around uh, the CPU. Yeah, I don't know why for a moment I was thinking this was an iPhone 8 um, when I already said this was an iPhone 7. Okay, so let's take off this top shield and see if any of these coils appear to be loose. Basically, I will just be pushing on them and seeing if I can see any type of flexion. Um, if I don't, I'm still probably going to dig out the underfill and see if any just appear to be loose. Um, usually if a coil is loose, it will, um, you'll either see some sort of movement when you push on them, or, or if you don't, then once you remove the, the underfill, it will usually just like slide right off. It's very loosely connected. If I don't see that, um, then I'm going to have to move on to some other ideas and see uh, what else this could, could possibly be. Um, next step would probably be to start measuring I2C lines to see if they're giving me my proper 1.8 voltages. After I do that, if I still don't have an answer, um, I'll be looking at NAND lines as well. So specifically these top coils are the ones I've seen be loose before. And they look okay now, but again, let's, let's just push on them a little bit. And they look pretty solid. I don't think these are going to be loose. that's fine. Um, the easiest way to see if these coils are still connected are to measure the voltages on those lines. Um, if the coils are not connected then I'll have a, um, a low or a missing voltage and if they are connected then my voltages will be uh, what they are supposed to be. As I mentioned earlier, a, a 0.04 amp draw doesn't usually indicate a shorted line, but I do want to check that just in case. Um, 
even though I'm pretty sure I won't see any type of shorts. But I'll, I'll measure some NAND lines and some RAM lines real quick, and uh, we can just double check to make sure that those lines are not short. So I'm just gonna pull open ZXW so I can verify, make sure I know what lines are what. So 3VO NAND, OV9 NAND, 1V8. So I'll check those lines. I suspect that all of them will be fine. Normal, 3VO is normal, OV9 is normal, and 1.8 is normal. So let's check some of these RAM lines. The RAM line looks normal, the other RAM line looks normal. Okay. Oh, there we go. Loose coil. Did I not, did I not call that? Okay. So that is great to see because this coil is definitely needed for this phone to boot and just by pushing on the side of it it came it came loose so this is most likely what the problem is and what's preventing boot um, just to verify what that line is this is a cpu sram sram voltage of cpu memory um, so yeah without that line the phone's not going to turn on and uh, I did kind of want to show you how I was going to measure voltages to determine um, to show that line was bad without noticing the coil um, and to measure all the other ones but now that's not going to be necessary um, but if I would have measured like one of these uh, capacitors I would have not been getting the proper voltage out of this coil and the proper voltage on this one, I'm not exactly sure, but it's probably around 0.75 or something like that. That's what I normally see for CPU power rails. Okay, so this is great. I'm going to just reattach this one. I think I could even use the same coil. Maybe I'll just flip it upside down. Oh no, I need these pads here. Yeah, I think I could clean up these pads enough to actually continue to use this coil. I'll try that, um, I'll try that at first. For sure and then if it doesn't work i'll uh, just go ahead and replace that but i think it'll be okay I really just need the most most easiest of connections here. I don't need this to be perfect. This phone's not going to be used after this. It's only going to it's only used here. You know what? I'm still going to pull off. There's a there's a film but there's like a layer of broken pad under here. Whatever. I guess if it, it doesn't want to come off and it gives me that, that's good enough. That's fine. This should work. Just make sure I can get a reading off of that coil. Yep, that's fine. So this is quite ugly, but I don't care. That's not. It's 
not the point. I just need this phone to boot up one time and I can pull the data from it. So it looks like I might be touching this cap. but that cap is on the same line, so it actually doesn't matter. So now, now I fully expect that this phone will boot already, just as it is. So we can just look on our DC power supply to see if we're getting what looks like a normal boot up sequence. Um, we know that before we were stuck on that 0.04 amp draw. Um, now I expect to see a slowly rising amp draw from from zero up to um, it eventually goes to like almost one amp, but I, I don't usually wait for it to go that far. Once I see it to get to like point two, then I usually pull it and test it with the screen. So let's see uh, let's see if we got a, a boot sequence. I think we do. So keep an eye out on my amp draw up here. Before it was 0.04, it should be different now. And that's already looking like a good beginning boot up sequence. Um, as soon as I see it hit like the 0.2s, I'll probably pull it and we, oh, there we go. Okay, we can just try this with the screen and a battery now. In fact, I should be able to use the housing it was in because that, that seemed largely undamaged. So this will be a nice case to, to be able to give them back a, a working phone. Uh, most of the time with data recovery, um, they just want their pictures. Most of the times they don't even they don't care about the phone, they already got a new phone. Um, but if I can give them a working phone back, uh, I, I like to. Oh, that's the wrong battery. Let me grab an iPhone 7 battery. So I actually didn't have any more iPhone 7 batteries, but I'm just going to use a 6S Plus. It, it doesn't matter as long as the connector fits. Which I had... I had thought iPhone 7 batteries worked with 6S Plus, but this doesn't seem to be plugging in. So, oops. Okay, I found an actual iPhone 7 battery, so let's just use that and see if we have a boot now. Hold the power button. Oh, I don't think I have the power button plugged in. I'll just prompt it with the charge port. It's a loose charge port. And there we go, Apple logo. Perfect. So let's just make sure it gets all the way to full boot. This one indicates that there's no passcode. I'm always a little nervous when I see no passcode because sometimes there is a passcode. And then um, if they said none, then a lot of the times they don't know what it is. So I'm happy this phone uh, was what I initially expected it to be. Um, that's why it's very useful to kind of figure out what your DC power supply is telling you before you. Um, like the different uh, 
tendencies it has, I should say. So the point, the, the low power mode, the 0 0.02 to 0.112, or 0 0.12, um, usually indicates something's missing. So that's what I was searching for right away. I knew something had to be loose, uh, some power rail had to be missing. It was just whether or not I could find it. Um, so, and no passcode, so perfect. So I'll be able to pull data from this one. Customer is going to be very happy. I'm very happy that this one didn't take too long and that I didn't uh, do anything too crazy around the CPU before remembering to check that last coil on the back. Um, kind of wish I was able to show you how I check voltages, but it's, it's not too difficult. Um, basically, you just hook up a charge port, a battery, and uh, that's it. Without a screen, you prompt it to boot, and then you flip it over, and you just measure the, the capacitors on those lines. Um, so we missed that, but maybe next time I'll be able to show something like that. Um, I think I'm going to start categorizing these videos into specific uh, subcategories on my channel um, so we can show you, so I can show you, you know, when I see 0 0.06 or 0 0.04 on here, what those solutions might be. When I see, uh, you know, a high amp draw um, after prompt to boot, what those instances might be. When I see uh, a looping amp draw up here, so it goes to, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.60 what that tends to be. Um, I think that that's how I'm gonna categorize my channel um, once I have enough videos that you know they can they can be grouped like that. Right now I still have a lot of just uh, like short detection type videos. Um, that's just because I get a lot of those phones in. Um, but as my YouTube channel gets older, I'm gonna see a lot more problems coming through here and uh, it'll, be, it'll be really nice to see how the channel grows with the different problems that I showcase. Um, so I really appreciate you coming by and watching. Um, if you don't mind, give me a like. And um, see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.